Hello again and welcome to our fourth class in this mini week-long beginners lower back release. So we're being inventive with our props because we're beginners and we might not have all the props. We're using cushions, we're using shoe boxes, we're using whatever we have around the house to help us to stay committed to a little daily opening. And today we are using a wall. So you might want to hit pause on me and bring your mat in to a wall so that it's going to be perpendicular to the wall. And let's meet and start there. Here we are. So we need to start with some simple panigas and side stretches to open this area, which of course relates to our back and our hips, an area that gets tight as the back and the hips get tight. So we're going to stand with the left side of our body towards the wall and we want to be arms distance away. So check, just bring your arm up, fingers facing down and make sure you're the right distance. And now we're lifting the right arm up, moving the middle buttocks forward and the tailbone down. Inhale, and with an exhale, windmilling over to the left so we feel the right side of the body stretching. Now make sure not to let the buttocks poke out. Press the buttocks forward, keep your heels firm, let your feet have intelligence there, guiding. And we're trying to turn and twist from the middle back, from the upper back, so that the chest is opening to the sky. Stretching, breathing, and three, and two, and one. Coming back out, and changing sides. Standing in Parigasan. So the right side of the body faces the wall, checking with our arm that we're in the right distance. And we're ready, inhaling the arm up. Middle buttocks pressing forward, pubic bone lifting, inhale. Exhaling over, windmilling over, so not letting the hands come in front. Really a windmill, so the hands are in line. Now push away from the wall and feel the waist deliciously stretching and make sure not to let the buttocks go. Bloop. Move the buttocks forward, the tailbone down to the heels. Stretching, turning, the chest opening to the sky. And three. And two. And one, coming back up and releasing. Coming now to stand with our backs against the wall, feet hip distance apart and feet completely parallel. Grip the knees and thighs up. Now just place your hands in the arch of the back so you can feel the gap between the arch and the wall. Okay, we're gonna micro bend the knees, place the hands on the hips, the buttocks, and tilt the pelvis so we feel our lower back getting closer to the wall. And now try to straighten the legs whilst keeping the pelvis tilted in that way. So different action. Make the heels really firm. As the tailbone presses down, it firms the heels, like the heels are cutting little holes into your floorboards. And now bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, tips of the thumbs touching, and turn the palms out. Keep the lower back to the wall and lift the arms up. Try to get the little pinkies to the wall without arching the lower back. Simplify the vikshasa. Heels firm. Grip the front thighs up. Keep tilting the pelvis. Stretching the arms higher. That's it. Moving the little fingers back to the wall. And five. And four. And three. And two. And one. Coming back down. And releasing. Micro bending the knees, re tilting the pelvis, heels firm as we straighten the legs, keep the pelvis tilted. There we go, arms in front, change the interlock, turn the palms out, tips of the thumbs touching. Straighten the arms. And when we're ready, inhaling, lifting up, simplified vichasa. Heels firm, pressing down. Quadriceps gripping the knees up. Don't overarch the lower back. Keep adjusting the pelvis so that the lower back is moving towards the wall as we stretch the arms up and try to bring the little pinkies also to the wall. Feeling a new idea of what it means to be verticalized and lengthed. That's it. And three, and two, and one. Bring the arms back down and exhale and releasing. 
and moving away from the wall. Okay, we're now going to turn and use the wall this way. So a half with an asan, we did it with chairs on the second class. Spread the feet, the width of the mat. Place the fingertips on the wall in line with each other. Remember everything, alignment, <laughs> checking, evenness. And now coming down and walking the feet back as needed so that you've reached your maximum length and opening. Remember, we're trying to go away from the rounded spine of a C like this. And we're trying to press the back ribs in, the shoulder blades down the back. Looking at our legs, grip the quadriceps up and press the heels down. And move the buttocks back. Roll the thighs slightly in towards each other so the sit bones are widening as they move back. And push into the hands against the wall to get more vibrancy in the arms. Feel the armpit area opening. We call it the armpit chest. It's crucial when we come to breathing exercises, pranayama. Here, just opening it is incredibly beneficial. Keep pressing into the arms, opening the armpit, stretching the waist, stretching the legs. And three. And two. And one. Beautiful. Coming up. All right. Pashtutanasan. Right leg forward, left leg back, with our fingertips, our hands on the wall and we're going to do bend and extend actions. So right leg forward and the distance will be entirely unique to you. So you can adjust as needed. Left leg back, the back leg turns in a little bit but not all the way like that. The back thigh, however, rolls in to help the hips face the wall. The front knee is bent for now. Press between the big toe and the index toe and travel to the root of the thigh, the right thigh, and draw the femur bone in. See how that helps you to turn the hips more and more to the wall. With that integrity in place, we're going to extend the leg. So ready, inhale, and exhale, extend the leg, femur's coming into the hip sockets, drawing in, good, and then bend the knee. If you need to adjust your distance, closer or further away, do so. And let's do it again, bending and extending. Keep the femur's coming into the hip sockets, and two, and one, good, bending, turn the hips to the wall, last one, and extending, femurs into the hip sockets, that's it, deepen it, breathe, embrace the pain, and three, and two, and one, bending, and coming forward to change sides, left leg forward, and right leg back, Pashpatanasan with the wall, with the bend and extend action. So first, check the back foot. Press the heel down and roll the thigh of the back leg in and see how that helps you to turn the hips. This front knee is bent for now and the femur is coming into the hip socket. All right, we are ready to bend and extend. Let's do it. Inhale and exhale, extending the front leg, drawing the femur bone in, pressing the front heel down. And then bending. As we bend, draw the femur bone in and see how that helps us to keep the hips really facing the wall. And again, extending and drawing the femur bone into the hip, pushing into the hands to stretch. That's it, feel the armpits opening. Backwards in. And then bending, absorbing the femur bone into the hip sockets. Last final time, ready? and extending and be right at the root of your femur bones, suck them in, push the buttocks back as you extend the trunk forward and three and two and one, coming back in, bending the front knee, bringing the back leg in and finding Tadasana. Heels firm, be present in both of the feet. Okay, we're going to come and continue the opening of Padigasan, the side waist, into the front shoulder because habitually as the lower back strains, then also this happens, a curling into the shoulders because there's so much tension here. So let's just reopen that up so that the entire body is flowing more fluidly. So I'm going to start with the left side so you can see what's happening. This time we're stepping into the wall. So the left side of the body is against the wall. 
And then we're extending the left arm behind us, rolling the arm open, and then pressing the hand to the wall. Like this. Bring the right hand behind, make a fist, and place it right between the buttock area, and press the tailbone forward. And now, lengthen the front spine with the inhale. That's it, from the pubic bone to the belly button, the belly button to the solar plexus, the solar plexus to the sternum, lift up. So we already feel more vibrancy there. And now we're going to just go turn the feet to the right, but keep the left arm against the wall as we shuffle the feet to the right, rolling away from the wall. Feel the front of that left shoulder opening. Press the hand firmly. Turn the head away from the wall as well. That's it. And three. And two. And one. Turning back in and releasing, changing sides. So coming in with the right side of the body to the wall, bringing that right arm behind you, rolling the arm open and placing the hand against the wall firmly. So we feel this shoulder opening. Little fist with the left hand between the buttocks, pressing the tailbone down and forward, and now lengthening the front spine. With each inhale, paint more and more length into the front spine, and now begin to shuffle the feet away from the wall, but keep the arm connected, the hand pressing, and roll that shoulder open and turn the head to the left. That's it, make sure the buttocks aren't poking out, press them forward. Lift the chest, lengthen the front spine, open the shoulders, and two, and one, and releasing. And we're going to do one more time on each side, changing the hands. So left side of the body against the wall, arm coming back. This is where we did it last time. Now we're trying to see if we can lift our hand to be more in line with the shoulder. Keep rolling this arm open, this shoulder open. Other fist in place, reminding the buttocks not to poke out. And shuffling, turning our feet away so we can feel it's a little bit more extreme here. Keep trying to lengthen the arms, rolling the shoulder back. Don't push the head forward. Let the face come back. Lift the chest. That's it. Three and two and one. Coming back to the front and releasing and changing sides. So coming right in. The hand, the arm comes back, find our first entry, and then lift it up so it's more in line with the shoulders. We keep the arm vibrant, the hand pressing, feel the shoulder opening. This hand comes between the buttocks, pressing the buttocks forward. And then we begin to turn the feet, turning the head. That's it, so we feel more when the hand is lifted. Breathe into that, welcome it. It's a healthy pain. Stretching, don't let the buttocks poke out. Press them forward. And two. And one. Coming back to the front. And releasing. Okay, let's come back to the standing polygasam, what we started with. So we're going to feel so different in our waist after linking it to the shoulders and the arms. You may even feel your neck starting to open. So standing with the right side of the body. Arms distance away from the wall. Left arm lifting. Windmilling over, pressing the buttocks forward, the tailbone down, the heels are firm. Feel the difference already. Now press into your hands to move this hip away from the wall, which intensifies the lengthening in here. That's it, turning to a center of the sky. And three, and two, and one. Coming up. Changing sides, standing parigasa, arms distance away. Bring the right arm up, heels firm, middle buttocks moving forward, tailbone down, and windmilling over, finding the wall. Pushing into our hands to move the outer right hip away from the wall, increasing our ability to lengthen that right waist. Now move your bottom hand forward, and your top hand back to help you to open the chest of the sky. But keep the heels firm. That's it. And three, and two. 
Good, and one. Coming back out and releasing. Okay, we're going to bring all of that into a trikonasana, a triangle pose, and we're going to use the outside edge of our back foot against the wall. The most important part in this pose of the back foot is the outer heel. It wants to press into the wall, not be away from it. So, placing the outside edge of the left foot against the wall, and this is where I see a lot. So you have to move the outside edge of the heel to the wall to have that connection in that part of the foot. And now the right leg comes forward, nice wide distance, and the foot is facing forward. And we want this heel to be in line with the front arch, right underneath the big toe. Now this is called, right here, our front buttock bone. In Trigonasan, we often think that we want to get down as far as we can, and so we let the buttock bone go out. Today, different application. I'm not interested in how far you can get down. I'm interested in that windmilling action where the buttock bone is pressed forward. Okay, so let's try it. Inhale, lift the arms, keep the outside edge of the foot firm against the wall, the legs straight and gripped. Exhale, reach to the right and feel the outside edge of the foot push against the wall. This femur bone into the hip socket, this front buttock bone coming forward, not poking out, and now place the webbing of the hand where it lands on the thigh and stretching the top arm to the sky. The legs are gripped, they are not passive. Those quadriceps are gripping up and with each exhale, you're gently pounding the front body bone forward so that you can twist to the sky with integrity. That's it, and three, and two. Push the outside edge of the foot against the wall, and one. Inhaling up, and releasing. So Trikonasana is like a lateral Sutta Parimushasana that we did in the first class. Lying down on the mat, leg out to the side with the bolster, the cushions underneath the outer thigh. So now we find it in a standing up pose. Changing sides, outside edge of the right foot against the wall, turning the foot in enough that you're sure the outer heel is pressing. Lifting the inner arch, re-pushing. Taking width, this front heel lined up with this part of the foot right underneath the big toe which is going to help us to better press this front buttock bone forward, not letting it poke out as we come down. Grip the leg muscles up, firmness. Inhale. Exhale, reach to the left and push into the outside edge of that back foot. Squeeze the back of the knee straight. Press that front buttock bone forward and then place the webbing of the hand where it lands and stretch the top arm to the sky. Check that your buttocks aren't poking back. Scoop that front body bone forward. Use the exhale like a little gentle hammer to push the front body bone forward so that you can twist and turn open with integrity. Grip the legs. The muscles are gripping up. That's it. And three. And two. Gripping up. And one. Coming back up. And exhale. And releasing. All right, let's take some cushions now. We're going to use the cushions for height underneath our buttocks and we're going to keep our mats against the wall, continuing with wall theme in today's practice. So grabbing your cushions and let's meet back on the mat. Here we are. So I've got my bolster. You've got your cushions and you're piling them up, as many cushions as needed, to have some actual height off the ground. And now we are coming to sit and you just want to check, turn around, check that you are all distance away. So here, I am on distance away, but I'm a little bit far. So I'm going to move a little closer in. But you don't want to be so close in that your elbow is jammed up. So that sweet spot that's right for the length of your arm, your twistingness, etc. And then when you're sure you've got that, let's cross the right ankle in front of the left, finding what's called sukhasana, cross-legged. And having height is going to allow the thighs to rest down. If your knees are still really lifted, that means there's crisping here, tightness, take more height. You can even sit on a chair and cross the ankles on the floor. Really adapting the practice to your needs. Okay, first of all, bringing the arms in front, interlocking the fingers, turning the palms out. Bhattvapasan in Sukhasan. The important thing here is to not allow the lower back to do this action, to arch. So move the tailbone down, lift the pubic bone up, and use the arms 
to lift the armpits up, that's it, and to find a new way of expressing length in the trunk. And three, and two, and one. Coming down, changing the interlock, the, I mean the cross of the ankles. And now changing the interlock of the fingers, turning the palms out, Parvatasan in Sukhasan, carefully watching our tendencies in the lower back, not allowing that to happen. Drawing back in, lifting the pubic bone up, lengthening the waists, that's it, push up through the heels of the hands, and three, and two, and one. Coming back down, and changing the cross of the ankles. Okay, now we're going to lift up and then turn into a gentle twist. The idea is to twist with length, okay? So, arms in front, inhale, lifting up. Keep the integrity in the lower back, the pubic bone lifting. And we're twisting to the right. This left hand comes to here, pressing. And this arm comes around, finds the wall. So don't allow there to be this happening and twisting from that. Mm -mm -mm. We want to press the back ribs in. The shoulder blades are going down the back and we're lengthening the front spine as we twist, which is helping to ensure that there's nice, healthy space between each of our vertebrae. Both hands are helping us to turn and twist. If it's hard to turn the head, just keep it facing forward. That's it. And three, and two, and one. Coming back to the middle. Inhaling the arms up. Turning and twisting to the left. So each hand finds their position to help us to turn and twist. Not collapsing and shortening the front spine. So press the buttocks down. Lengthen the front spine with the inhale. And from that length, twist. Feel the back ribs starting to feel themselves in new ways. And one. Coming forward. And changing the cross of the ankles. Okay. Last time on each side. Parivrita Sukasa. So inhaling the arms up to increase the length and the liftingness. Exhaling, twisting. Do not force the twist. The length is the most important. Keep the lumbar completely stable and try to twist more from the middle and upper back. And then coming back to the middle. And our last side, lengthen. Really try to reach the sky. And exhale, turning and twisting. Now if you're feeling any strain in the lower back, it's because you've gone back into the habit of over-twisting from the lower back. In that case, re-firm the lumbar. Make sure to scoop the pubic bone and the belly button upwards towards the lower back. And now try to twist from the belly button and the waist, and there on up. And then exhale, and unwinding. Okay, let's move our cushions to the side, and come onto the mat, having a little strap handy. We're going to lie down, with our feet against the wall. And this helps keep intelligence in the soles of the feet, which of course affects so much of our lower back and our hips. So the thighs are rolled in, so the heels are down, the kneecaps facing the sky. Now just micro bend the knees and lift the buttocks up and move them towards the wall so that when you lie down, your lower back is flush to the wall, just like when we did tree pose against the wall. And then push into the feet, straighten the legs, Keeping that pelvic tilt. Supta Tadasan. Breathing here, trying to keep that pelvic tilt. Keeping the left foot against the wall. 
Bend the right knee towards us, interlock the fingers. Ikkapada Sutta Padana Muttasana. Keep that left foot firm. The left thigh rolling in and the front of the left thigh pressing down. But as we bring the right knee closer, we're softening in the front right groin, deepening, sending the exhalation there. Lower back is on the mat. And then extend the leg, line the feet up, micro bend the knees, tilt the pelvis, make sure the lower back is on the mat, and straighten the legs with that intact. Sutta Tadasana. And now bending the left knee, ikkapara sutta navaramutasana, interlocking the fingers. Keep this right leg firm, the right thigh rolling in, the right thigh pressing down, the heel firm, the leg gripped, but sending all of your softness into this front groin, deepening. So this front groin learns to be invited into the hip socket rather than push up, invited in. Keep going back to the lower back area, making sure you're not arching there unconsciously. And then re-extend that left leg and connect again with Sutta Tadasana. And now our strap, bending the right leg and putting the strap on the arch of the foot and straightening, finding Sutta Panushasana with the left foot against the wall and the left leg straight. Pull with the hands, push up through the foot. That's it, expose the back of that knee more and more. And as you inhale, bring the inhale to this area. It's like sunlight in a dark part of the garden. Open this up. See if you can bring the leg closer, closer, closer. That's it. And three, and two, Good, and one. Bending the knee and finding first Sukta Tadasan and reconnecting with the pelvic tilt in the lower back. And then lifting the left leg and finding our Sukta Parambhishasana on the left hand side. This leg stays firm. The heel is an anchor pressing down. The leg muscles are gripped around the bones. Nothing passive or spaghetti stretchy at all. Push up through the foot, pull with your hands down. That's it. Feel the beautiful back of the knee opening and inhale fresh prana into this area. Extend, breathe, release. See if you can bring the leg closer and closer and closer. Good. And three and two. Good. And one. Exhale, releasing and ending. Oops, I'm struggling with my straps here. Ending with both knees towards the chest, feet lined up, knees lined up, interlocking the fingers. Dvipara Sutta Bhavana Muttasa. Remembering to keep the lower back and the sacrum on the mat. So don't hug the knees in and lift the lower back up. Try to anchor down and get the pose from the softness of the roots of the front thighs. The ability of that area to soften and to unclench. And then bringing the feet to the floor, rolling over, pushing ourselves up. And we are ending with an inverted chabasan, legs up against the wall. So coming in sideways, Remembering from last time that we want our legs to be extended and relaxed. So if being this close is creating strain, move further away. If it's hard to hold your feet up there, they keep feeling like they want to drop, take your strap and just tie a little loop around the feet so that you release that in your Shavasana. One more thing to let go of, one more way to relax more. Arms extended to the side, shoulders open, 
so that the spiritual heart, the sternum plate, is also open, not closed, protected. Feeling the back body on the mat, the left hip, the right hip, the left sacrum, the right sacrum. And with the next exhale, relax the abdomen towards the lower back and see how now even more you feel the lower back on the mat. So the lower back and the abdominal area are so linked. And then gently the eyelids closing and melting into this state of complete pacification. No more effort, no more strain. Just receiving all of the gifts of this pose and allowing all of our work to settle gently into the brain, into the cells of the body. Loka Samastaha Sukinho Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Bending the knees, the feet sliding down the wall nice and gently. The eyes opening, the gaze diffusing. And then rolling it. And welcome back from our fourth practice, using out the lower back and corresponding areas in the body. I hope you're feeling a difference and that you'll let me know what you're feeling. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste. Take good care.